What is up, my Shield sisters? I'm so excited to be here. I cannot believe it's week four. I'm kind of sad. Although I am happy that this is just one of the Shield Sister studies I will be doing virtually online. So that's exciting that it's not over, it's not done. This is just one part of a four week virtual Bible study and I will be releasing other Shield Sister studies that will be on different subjects. But this one of course was on the squad. We need to get the nod of God about our squad. And my goodness, ladies, just to hear your stories, just to get to know you guys, has blessed my heart more than you will ever know. And there is nothing that excites my heart more than to see God's daughters rise up and join together to be bold, to be fearless, to be courageous, to go after the enemy with all boldness because we've already won the victory. And to see women and daughters rise up to be bold in their faith and bold in who they are and who they were created to be, who don't cast away their confidence in God, but walk boldly towards who they were meant to be. It excites my heart and I could seriously cry so hard because I'm excited about the journey we've been on together and I cannot believe that we are at week number four. In week one, we learned about the importance of holding our shield of faith. We learned about the importance of joining together to make a shield wall and that how Hebrews 11, 6 says, without faith it is impossible to please God, that we can't please him if we don't have faith, and we have to hold up our shield of faith and join together our shields of faith with our sisters to have a shield wall as we advance towards the enemy because we have every ounce of land that we set our foot on. That's promised to us in scripture, and so we can march boldly forth with our shield sister wall being protected from the fiery darts of the enemy like it says in Ephesians 6:16, 6, and holding strong because Matthew 11:22 says the kingdom suffers violent but the violent take it by force and that Isaiah 59 19 when the enemy comes in like a flood the spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him we are a bunch of bold beautiful ladies who are holding up our shield of faith joining them together, building that shield wall, and going after the enemy. And that was all in week one. <laughs> but we also learned in week one how important it is that we get the nod of God about our squad. That we get the nod of God about our squad. We have to be very intentional about who we choose to go to battle with. And that's why in week two we talked about who needs to go? Who in our life needs to go? Who doesn't belong there? Who do we not need to go to battle with? We talked about it, how bad company corrupts good morals. Who is messing us up? Who does not belong on the battlefield with us? Who does not belong on the battlefield with us? That's what we have to think about, and we talked about that. And then in week three, we talked about not only who needs to go, but who needs to stay. And we talked about in Proverbs how it says, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. And we talked about how important it is for us to sharpen one another and to make sure that we have people in our life who encourage us, like our, our down girlfriends who we can just go out for coffee with, with, we could grab our Starbucks, we could go to the coffee shop, we could go out to Mexican and eat bottomless chips and salsa, anybody, amen? And we could be with them nonstop, it wouldn't even matter, and they are our best friends. But then also having those people in our life who stretch us, but that they still belong. We still need their strategies on the battlefield. And we talked about how when iron sharpens iron, sparks fly, that there are going to be times in our life when God brings people into our life who are going to sharpen us and mold us, but they may not be the type of person that we always want to be around. And then we talked about it in that same week how a, t a bag of tea, it's only God sends those people to bring out the pressure in us because God needs other soldiers to 
bring out those things in us, and some things only come out under pressure, like the hot water is with the tea. The potency of the tea only comes out under the pressure of the hot water, and that's why sometimes we have people in our life who belong on our squad to hold up our shields of faith and build a shield wall because they bring out greatness inside of us that we didn't know was in our own self, even if they put us in uncomfortable, hot situations. And finally, this week, week four, our final Shield Sister study of squad. Who needs to go? Who needs to stay? Who do I need to help along the way? Who do I need to help along the way? James 2, 14 through 17. If you have your Bibles, I want you to open them up. James 2, 14 through 17, and it says, What good is it, dear brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith, but don't show it by your actions? Can that kind of faith save anyone? Suppose you see a brother or sister who has no food or clothing, and you say, Goodbye, and have a good day. Stay warm, and eat well. But then you don't give that person any food or clothing. What good does that do? So you see, faith by itself isn't enough. Do you hear that? Faith by itself isn't enough unless it provides good deeds. It is dead and useless. Did you get the gist of this scripture? It's so heavy and it's always broken my heart when I hear this scripture because it's saying that if we don't meet actual needs, if we don't help people, not just get rid of people who don't belong in our life and not just link up with our shield sisters and have a pizza party, but if we're not using our faith to help people, this scripture is saying our faith is dead. Our shields of faith that are locked together, our shield wall, it's nothing if we are not using our faith to help others. Now, how I see this kind of is that we need to bring people who need help into our shield wall to protect them from the enemy, to reach needs, to help them. I, I, I see a picture of us with our shields up, our shield of faith, and we're joined together in our shield wall, and we're opening up that shield wall and allowing people to come in to be safe and to be protected from the darts of the enemy. Faith without works is dead. The Bible is very clear about that. If we're not helping others, if we're not reaching out, if we're not giving to others, if we're not doing good deeds, then our faith is dead. You know, I've struggled with this a lot in my life. When I was in college, I was getting my undergraduate college degree was in, uh, in Christian studies. And I was getting a Christian studies degree. Now, how holy is that? <laughs> how holy is the getting Christian studies degree, right? And you are studying the Lord. But I decided going in. You see, when I was in high school, I, I was a Pharisee. Okay, let's just be real. <laughs> I was very judgmental, very, like, I, I was holier than thou. I was a little oversaved. Have you ever met anybody who was a little oversaved? <laughs> and they were a little bit holier than thou. Well, that was kind of me. I love people, but I was just a little holier than thou. And I didn't really reach out, and I had a lot of backlash, and I just really had a change of heart when I went to college. And I was like, while I'm here, I don't just want to learn about God. I want to be used by God. And so I began to think about ways to meet needs on campus. And one of the biggest needs that I saw on campus was that there wasn't really a time and a place set aside and designated for people and students to join together to pray and to fast because Prayer isn't what we do to get to the main thing. Prayer is the main thing. And so we have to be intentional about our prayer lives. And I 
there is power in the unity of a student body coming together, of a church coming together, of a group of people coming together. And so I started this thing called Call on the Quad. And this is not like to toot my own horn, toot toot. No, that's not that at all. But it was to really reach out to the campus. And I mean, the first time, it was 12 hours of prayer and fasting, so kind of extreme for college students who like to eat and have to study. But that's just what I felt in my heart. And it started out with 30 people. And then the last one, there were almost 200 people there for the 12 hours. And it was just amazing to see what God had done. And many people were called into the missions field and many people heard from God, not because of I did something great, but because I was obedient and God was able to do good works through that situation. You never know what your act of obedience can bring, but if we are not meeting the needs of those around us, we can be coming to Bible study every week. We can be listening to this Bible study, but if we are not helping people, if we are not seeing those around us and their lives become better, then our faith is useless. I mean, do you see what it says in the scripture? It says that, uh, you know, if you are not, if they say, I need clothing, I need this, and we aren't helping them, then our faith is dead. And I'm not saying I'm perfect. I'm as guilty as you as, as driving by the homeless person on the street and not giving anything. I'm as guilty as you. But there are people that God brings into our life that we can help. It makes me think of I live in a different location. I'm like kind of obsessed with my family and like the biggest way of all time. <laughs> uh, actually, we looked up... Um, our family ancestry and it links back to a Scottish cult <laughs> like a cult of people who like did not like to separate from one another so that really explained a lot because we're a super close family and we yeah a cult background really explains a lot <laughs> but I, I, so I got married and I moved far away from my family and to work at a ministry with my husband. And as I was there, honestly, the first year and a half, it was just a pout festival. <laughs> Have you ever pouted or are all of you perfect? Okay, I definitely pouted because I was in that moment and I was just like, I don't want to be here. How in God's name could you take me away? for my mother. How, how could you do this to me, Lord? What were you thinking? And just this whole argument, this whole pouting, I'm not happy. I want to go home. I want my mama. I want my daddy. And you're like, grow up, Caitlin. I know. I know I needed to, but that's what I wanted. And I'm such a homebody. And so I was like, oh my goodness. And so I pouted. Pouted. Didn't really serve in the ministry. Didn't really do it, too much just kind of was there set on the front row because um, that's what you do when you're the pastor's wife and went very involved but it wasn't until a few months uh, about a year and a half afterwards that God really began to put on my heart to serve in that ministry and to really get up off my whiny butt <laughs> My grandmother, I hope Meemaw is not watching this. Y'all, I'm from the South, and I have a Meemaw, and Meemaws don't like when you say but, so hopefully <laughs> she's not watching this. She'll, like, comment and be, like, a nasty comment, like, you should not use but in your sermons <laughs> or in your um, courses. But anyway, I quit pouting, and God really led on my heart to do a purity course for these girls and, and not to brag on myself, but to say that 30 people, 30 girls committed to a life of fearlessness and purity. Now, I could have not done a good deed. I could have stayed in my pouting zone. I could have stayed. I was still reading my Bible. I was still going to church. I was still faithful. I was still doing, you know, I was still boldly preaching the gospel and traveling and preaching. I was still doing that. But I wasn't serving where I was. My faith wasn't being worked out where I was, and there's power in where you are. Look around you. There are needs. There are things God needs to get done, but he can only get it done through you. 
And watch this. It can be done through your passions. I am so passionate. I am super, super passionate about writing thank you cards. I know, you're like, what? How can you be passionate about writing thank you cards? I just am. I'm super passionate about writing thank you cards. And I got upset one day, and I don't know what, if it was the Lord or what came over me. I got upset one day because I felt like our military, our men and women were not being thanked enough for their service, for sacrificing. I have a grandfather who served in World War II, and I'm super patriotic. I love this country. I'm proud to be an American. And I wanted to thank our military. And so I got a group together, and we began to write letters of thanks to our troops. And we've had so many people thankful that they received a letter of gratitude for their service to our country. Was that a deed? It absolutely was. Was it something I love to do? Absolutely. See, what we need to realize as Shield Sisters is we can come together and think about the force that we have when I'm doing something I love serving others, you're doing something you love, because they could be opposite giftings, total opposite gifting. My dad loves to go door-to-door -door evangelism. I can't think of anything more frightening and scary in my life than go door to door and evangelize. I can hardly, I mean, I'm going to confess, it like makes me nervous when Jesus tells me to talk to somebody in the Starbucks drive through So I can't imagine literally going up to somebody's door like, knock, 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 here I am, do you know Jesus? Like that scares me. But he loves it. My mom, I, she is the kindest person you will ever meet. She will always, she's just always taking care of needs and creating peace. And she really helps a lot of women. She reaches out to women to mentor them, to see them become their very best. I don't, I, I have some of that in me for sure as a coach, but she has an extra special gifting for that. I, I, I know a lot of different people who just, oh, one lady, her name is Angel, she literally feels like her gift is to make food for church services for free. And she's an awesome cook. It's not like one of those American Idol singers who go up and like think they can sing, but they can't. She literally can cook so good. It's incredible. And she uses her gifts. You see, ladies, that's what we have to do. We have to link up together and use our gifts hold up our shield of faith and link up to use our gifts together to be a positive light in the darkness. Matthew 5, 16 says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify God. We have to use our giftings to give good deeds to one another. But we also have to use our group of shield sisters, our shield of faith, our shield wall, to be a place of nurturing to help our shield sisters. There are gonna be times when we are down. There are gonna be people in the shield wall, our shield sister, who are gonna be down. Are we gonna let them bleed and point a finger? Are we gonna bend down and help them bandage those wounds up? Are we gonna laugh when someone falls? Are we gonna help them get back up? Are we gonna point fingers at people who make a mistake? Are we gonna hold their hand and help them walk through that problem? Well, if we see one of our shield sister who's a single mom struggling to put food on the table, are we gonna let her and her children go hungry? Or are we gonna get together as shield sisters and make sure she and her children are fed? Are we gonna kick someone out of the group just because they're a baby Christian and don't know what they're doing? Are we going to reach out and lend a hand to lift them up? What are you going to do? Are you going to be a shield sister who meets a need? Are we going to be shield sisters who join together, hold up our shields of faith, march towards the enemy, not only using our good deeds to shine light, but using our shield wall as a place of protection and healing for our shield sisters who are wounded and hurt? Because real soldiers take care and protect the needs of others. And so we have to be intentional about helping others. So who do you need to help along the way? So let's review. 
We are what? Shield sisters. Let's say it again. We are shield sisters. We, I want you to do that wherever you are. If you're listening to this in the coffee shop, if you're listening to this in your car, if you're at home in your PJs, I want you to go, we are shield sisters. Did you ever see we are Marshall? Well, we are shield sisters and we've got our squad together. This has been the first four week virtual Bible study of shield sisters. And this time we were focusing on the squad. We have to get the nod of God about our squad because we've got to get our shield of faith up and build our shield wall with the right sisters around us. Not just any sister, the right shield sister around us. Number one, who needs to go? Who in your life, in our life, needs to go? Who doesn't belong on the battlefield with us? Who is holding us down, guy or girl, who does not need to be with us and who stops us from being the best warriors we can be? Who needs to go? Who needs to stay? Who are those people in our life who are constantly encouraging us? Who are the iron sharpening us? And maybe uh, some of them we love to death and some of them make us, some people make us feel uncomfortable. They're not our favorite people, but they still belong there because God is using them to bring out our greatest potential. Who needs to stay and who do we need to help along the way? Who, how are we going to link up to God and shine our light, helping others in the world? And how are we, who are we going to help inside of our shield sister wall? Our shield sisters who maybe are wounded and we can nurse them back to help. Not cast them out of the shield wall, but pull them into the shield wall to protect them, nurture them, and see them become whole and happy again. To see them become their very best. Remember Ephesians 6, 16. Don't let go of your shield of faith because it will help you stand against the fiery darts of the enemy. Hebrews eleven six. 6, without faith, it is impossible to please God and being confident that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Ladies, it's now it's more important now than ever that we rise up as a generation of shield sisters across all ages, across all denominations, across all colors, across all backgrounds. We have to join together because Judges 2.10 says, after one generation died, another grew up that did not know about God and his work. We have a generation coming behind us that are in danger of not knowing about the works of the Father. But it's up to us shield sisters to get the right squad together and not let the enemy gain another yard not let the enemy gain another foot we have to hold up our shield of faith link it together let go of the wrong people keep the right people and help those with our shield wall moving in and being a light in the world and also nursing our hurt shield sisters back to help so they can get back in to battle we have to rise up. There's no time to be pretty on a pew anymore. It's time to be bold in battle and a light in the darkness. And it only happens when shield sisters rise up and they first and foremost have the right squad. The same God that Moses used to part the Red Sea. The same God that protected Daniel in the lion's den. The same God that set through the fire with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The same God that was with Peter as he walked in the water. The same God that raised Jesus from the dead. That power lives in you and it lives in me. And if we will ever tap into that and hold up our faith with boldness, link together and make that shield wall, we will be unstoppable sisters. I believe that's what we are. I believe that's what you are. We are shield sisters. We are going to go boldly with the right squad. Now we will be doing other studies and I'll be releasing them as they become available. But right now let's focus on being shield sisters and getting the nod of God from our squad, building our shield wall and being a force to be reckoned with. Watch out enemy. Shield sisters are on the loose. I love you ladies. Thank you for an incredible four weeks. Let's stay in touch in our group. I'm praying for you. I believe in you. Shield Sisters United. It's awesome. Thanks guys.